So this is a follow-up video from my previous one where I showed you how to remove the front wheel cap. I know a lot of y'all have had questions about the rear one. So today we're going to be opening this rear cover over here and we're going to be taking it off because the problem is this one's got dual wheels at the back here. Because it's got dual wheels and if you have this cap fitted here, so this wheel cap, you can't access the tire valves easily. You can normally access one through the hole, which you can see here. So you can access that one, but it's near impossible to get to the rear one. So in order to get to both the tire valves, the inner over there and then the outer, we have to take this cover off. So in order to take this cover off, there's a notch over here identifying where the nuts are. So there's always two nuts on these type of wheel caps. So there's one here and it'll be the opposite end. Like I said in my previous video, to identify it, look for the notches over here. There's normally a notch here and there's a notch here. So once we take that off, then I'll show you what is in there. So what you'll need is generally a 30 millimeter or 29 mm. So that's a 29 or 30 millimeter socket with a long extension and a half inch ratchet or something similar. So if you have a look at one of these over here, I've explained this in the previous videos, but it's basically a nut that's molded into the steel trim over here. And look at the notches. So this is, like I said, how you identify it. It's notched in individually here, and then it's glued in, you could say. So you have to take both those two off, and there's always two that hold it on. Then you pull out the cap itself, so the cap comes off. So that's how the whole cap comes off and once the cap comes off then you can get access to the valves. Easiest way to find the valves is to look in the notches over here on the rim and then eventually you will find the tire valve over there. If you're lucky enough and if your tire shop did a good job it'll be the inner tire will also have the tire valve just next to the outer one which makes life a lot easier when filling it up. Also another thing to note if you're going to a fuel station to fill up these tires, because they're like commercial tires, most places, like for example, if you're going to a BP or a Shell or something similar, those air pressure fillers are not capable of going up to the pressure required for these tires, because you have to go up quite a bit. So check your manual, because each motorhome is different. For this one, you'd go between about 50 to 60, 55 to 60 psi on these tires, and you need something like this. So we show you here. It has to be a dual type valve setup where this one will be used for the outer tire and then this one will be used for the inner tire. If you don't have something like this, it's almost, it is possible to fill the tires, but it makes it very difficult. So if you've got something like this to fill up the tires, then it makes life a whole lot easier. If you are still struggling with this, you can take it into a workshop or tire specialist shop where they work on trucks that it'll be easy for them to fill up both your outer and your inner tire. But sometimes you need to point out where those um, two nuts are because if they're not aware of how this wheel cap is on, they'll damage it. And also make sure if you do take it into a workshop that they do not rattle or use an impact gun on these nuts. They should only tighten it by hand using a socket and a wrench. Otherwise, they'll strip these and then you'll never get them off later on. Be, you'll have to cut them off so it becomes a real nightmare for job. So we'll go ahead and fill this inner and outer tire and we'll show you how that's done. Sometimes you might find it really difficult to remove those plastic caps that are on the tire belts. So you'll need a set of nose pliers to take it off. So as you can see here, you have to stick your hand in through the rim or like I said, use a set of needle nose pliers and you should be able to get to that inner cap for that inner tire valve. So like I said, if you've never done this before, you might need a set of pliers, otherwise it's gonna to be too difficult to remove that. So as you can see, these tires were really low. It was below 30 PSI. So that means you'll get abnormal wear and you run the risk of a blowout as well, so that's why it's very important to check your tires. This tire should have been up to about 55 PSI and not 28 PSI as you just saw. 
So at the moment, that's how we're filling the inner tire. Notice how useful this tool is now and how easy it makes it to fill it. I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to see or you want the name of this particular tool. So I'll leave a link of something similar to this. So that tire is all filled up now. So we'll do the outer tire now. We'll fill up the outer. So this is where the rear part of the tool comes into its own. You just put it like that and then you fill it up that way. So this one wasn't too bad. But it's still low at the moment. So as you can see now, it's all perfect at 60 psi. So we'll go ahead and take that out. When reinstalling the caps, you can also use that set of nose pliers that you use to remove it or you can stick your hand in between the tire like so and then that way as well you can get access to putting the tire valve cap back on so that's pretty much how you do that and I will show you now how to put the wheel cap back on depending on your make and model this one's a Ford Transit so if we come over here you generally have a plaque over here and it mentions what the inflation is and what PSI you're supposed to go to on your front and rear. The Mercedes Sprint is a little bit different. You have to refer to the manual. And um, other makes and models like the Fiat Takedas and VW Crafters are a bit different as well. So I refer to your owner's manual. So now that we've filled up both the inner and outer tire, we'll go ahead and reinstall the wheel nuts back on. And like I said before, I can't stress how important it is to use a handheld tool to retighten this and not an impact gun or an electric tool or similar. You must stress this even if you take it to a tire shop that they use a torque wrench or just use just a manual tool, so just a non power tool, just like, like you can see here, to tighten it back up. All you want to do is tighten it back up, you do not want to force it and don't over tighten it. So when it gets tight, just go about another half turn, so that's, and that's usually generally enough. While you do the rear, you might as well do the spare tyre, which is at the back. Most of the commercial vehicles are easily accessible, so you just come underneath the vehicle, as you can see here, and then you just open that and just fill it up here. Again, just follow your manufacturer spec as to what the PSI should be. If on your particular vehicle, the wheel is facing the other way, so the rim is facing the other way, and you don't have access here, you'll have to... And if your wheel caps on the front are aligned properly, you should technically gain access to the air valve for the front without having to remove this wheel simulator or wheel cap at the front. So it's as straightforward as that. That's it for now, guys. Hope this helped you all. Don't forget to give us a like. It does help the video reach more people so they can see issues with vans and fixed issues they might have or encounter and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more interesting camper van and other content related to motorhomes thanks for watching guys